Hey, hey, all, welcome to another day, another time, another day, another opportunity to talk mules and donkeys. My name is Dave, this is Steve Edwards, and just like we do every Tuesday, we come to the internet, hello internet, to talk mules and donkeys with you. Uh, you come to the internet, we come to the internet, and we all just dance around mule and donkey questions for an hour. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and we sure are glad that you're here today. Uh, there's a lot of folks who come and attend uh, and hang out with us every single week. And one of the things you're going to see them start to do right here and right now, if you're a first-time visitor, you're going to see this, is they're going to share their name, where they're watching from, and what the weather is like. And why do we do that? Uh, well, they would tell you, if, if they were sitting right next to you, they'd say, well, because Dave and Steve want to know that you're here. And that's the truth. We want to know that you're here. So if this is your first time watching, or if this is your 50th time watching, we would love to hear from you. Put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like. And we sure would love to be able to say hello to you. And what we will do over the next 60 minutes is talk mules and donkey. But we start every single week by getting an update from Mr. Steve Edwards himself. Steve, how have things been going? Oh, well, I actually know how things have been going uh, over the last uh, week or so. Uh, tell me, what, what am I looking at here? Well, you know, it's kind of tough when you go to take a shower and you've got no water. So I go up and I check my well and I'm thinking this ain't good. And I've got a 2000 gallon holding tank and it's down past the prime spot. Long story short, as you can see, we, uh, with very good friends, uh, one is Captain Richard Matthews. He's the one on the right-hand side with his hat around backwards, the big guy, nicknamed the Matt Truck. Yeah, that guy, he's big. Anyway, he, uh, he uh, manages the water company there in Queen Valley, so he has access to some equipment. So he brought out his uh, crane, and we pulled my well, 425 feet worth of pipe. And then all that wire on the ground is the electric, which goes down to my pump, which pumps my water up. Now, uh, 10 years ago, almost to the day, we replaced this pump before. And yep, these wells last, uh, these pumps last an average of they say between eight and 15 years i got 10 out of mine so anyway we got water now and uh, i had a shower i felt good so now i'm ready to rock and roll i smell good yes sir -y. hey Just look what else i got what you got honey pure, pure honey yes this came you know you know if dave we got the greatest folks in the world that come and and listen, mules and donkeys. You know that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean these these folks make me feel like I'm 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 king or something like that. And you, <laughs> uh, I just had a guy tell me today. He says, "Man, that Dave, he really knows his stuff." And I said, "Yep, that kid is is as sharp as a tack." You know. So here's a little deal here from Dave O'Brien from uh, Texas. Steve, I hope you and your wife are in great health most important part of life. And here's a little bit of honey, 2.5 pounds, yes siree, and uh, to sweeten your day. Thank you for uh, your help and support with my Molly Mule, and I sure appreciate it. Have a great day, Dave O'Brien. Then I got a note back here, the honey is from last fall's crop. So you know what, Dave, uh, when people, are, are really happy and they're patting you on the back and this sort of thing and and they're learning a lot that's that's that you know all the free stuff that we do how many videos you say we got on youtube what happened dave yep well anyway folks I, anybody there dave is gone and uh, we may have to reboot this thing Oh, can oh, you hear okay. me now? Yeah, there we are. Okay, there we go. Uh, 300 to 400. It's somewhere in between there. Somewhere around in there. Anyway, you know, people say you do so much for free. But look, Dave, we get all these great little emails and texts saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. It worked. And that's, there is more than enough payment, you know. Uh, I love it when people say they've done it themselves. Yeah. You know, that's what's important. Yeah, absolutely. We love hearing that. 
uh, one of the things that is remarkable, uh, of course, I don't, I don't know if this is exactly, uh, you know, if it led exactly to this or not, but uh, years ago, Steve, every single summer, would load up the trailer, load up the truck, and would start traveling around the United States uh, every single summer. Well, there was a stretch where you had scheduled your hip replacement surgery to where you'd be ready to go in the summer, but there were complications and it had to, there was an infection and Steve had to do it again. And so it wound up that Steve wasn't able to travel that summer and help people and show up at clinics and expos and this sort of thing. Well, it was around that time that we started doing this broadcast and what we discovered is, yes, there is a unique hands-on experience that can only be had in person, and that's happening here in Montana coming up this weekend, and that's happening in Tennessee last weekend in September, uh, first weekend in October. But there's a lot that can be done over the Internet in a forum like this. And what we found is that as we did this more and more, week in, week out, Folks were taking what we were talking about and they were actually able to go out and get results on their own. And they would call up and they would say, hey, I'm trying to do this. And Steve would talk to them. They'd send pictures and say, I'm trying to do that. And Steve would tell them what they needed to adjust. But we were able to start impacting hundreds of people on a monthly basis as opposed to, you know, several dozen here, several dozen there and traveling. And it's been a lot of fun. And so we sure are glad that you're here with us this week and you get to be a part of that story as we continue to write it. Um, so like I said, we want to know uh, your name, where you're watching from and what the weather's like. That's the first thing that we ask on this broadcast. Uh, we want to know you. We want to say hello. We want to know that you're here. Uh, the second thing that we ask is that you ask any and every mule or donkey question that you have. There's no question that's a bad question. There's no question uh, that we've answered too many times. What we find is that, uh, yes, we might have answered it two or three or four times in the last several months, but when you ask it, you're asking because now you're interested and you're going to hear it in a new way. And somebody else is going to hear your answer and they're going to compare it with the answer before and it's going to make a whole new level of sense. And so we want you to ask it. No dumb question. No question we've asked too many times. Ask any and every mule or donkey question that you have in the comments section. That's the second thing. And then the third thing that we invite you to do is to share the broadcast. And that's to make sure that as many people as possible who are out there getting frustrated trying to train and work with their mule or donkey know that there's a better way, that there's another way, that they don't have to give up. They don't have to you know, put out all this money for a professional trainer, but they can do it themselves. So uh, I'm going to hop in, say hello to a few of the folks who are hanging out with us, and uh, then we'll get into some questions. Julie is watching from Kentucky, where it's 85 degrees. Whitney's watching from Davidson, North Carolina. Weather has been rainy for four days straight. Dave O'Brien, hello from East Texas, 85 and humid. Merlin Olson watching live from Northwest Minnesota. We are finally getting some rain. It's about 72 degrees. Deborah is watching from Northern Indiana. Uh, 88 and hot, uh, but not humid, so we count the blessings there. Hilda's watching. Mini mules are the best. We love those statements. Good old mini mules. Sean is watching from Valiant, Oklahoma. Sunny and 85. Barbara's watching from Sullivan, Missouri. Hot and in the 90s and sunny. Hannah's watching from Dunnellin, Florida, where it's 84 degrees and gorgeous. Dave says, hey, Steve, that's a sharp look looking T-shirt. Looks like mine. Steve, what you got on there? Hey, uh, this is the T-shirt that is actually kind of designed by David Pingali. Yep. He was the one, the coffee man, you know. He was the one that says, you know, Steve, it seems like every day is a different day for these mules. I said, yep. It is. You can actually, you can move a, a mule 10 feet, 10 foot, and it's a whole different situation, you know. But yep, it's the new t shirt. There it is. You can see it all. Da, da, da. Yep. And these t shirts, I'm taking some to my clinic. You know me, uh, I like seeing that. And listen, if you all got some rides that you're going on and, uh, and up and coming rides where you got, uh, several thousand people, mule riders riding. Uh, just kidding. But there are some big rides. Give me a holler. Uh, maybe I might get you dressed just right yeah, so that you can go on that trail ride. Hey, Dave, we want to give away a couple t-shirts today. 
and a couple of hats to somebody that can answer some questions. All right. How about that? A couple t-shirts, couple hats. Let me see here. I've got right here. Oh, let me get Steve on here. Don't want to miss Steve here. There he is. We've got uh, over on the Mule Ranch store, y'all can see, we've got Come Along Coffee. This is our other section. we got Come Along Coffee. Every day is a different day t-shirt. You can do. You can pick mule or donkey, and then we've got our trucker hat. So very cool. We'll do that at the end. Y'all pay attention. Y'all listen up. And uh, at the end, maybe you could win some Queen Valley Mule Ranch merch. That would be awesome. Uh, let's see here. Bill says, sharing to mules of Ohio and mules of Indiana, 80 degrees and sunny. First cutting of hay is on the ground. Steve, that's a great conversation. Let's talk a little bit about hay, first cut, second cut, third cut. What is the ideal feed that we would want to be going after uh, when it comes to hay for our mules and for our donkeys? Well, it's the type of hay uh, <coughs> is also really important. But here's the thing. These mules cannot have a lot of carbohydrates. Your first cutting is great for cattle. Man, it is just tremendous for cattle. You want to fatten up a hog, you want to fatten up cattle, first cutting. Second cutting, and here's the deal, it's because it's, it's all the carbs that's in that feed, okay? And so now your second cutting is not quite as, as, a, as sugar handy, carbs, uh, but it's, it still can be pretty tough. And here's the thing. These equine, read it on the internet, folks, see if I'm pulling your leg. These equine cannot handle um, real carbohydrate, real carb feed, like alfalfa especially, you know. It is really tough on their kidneys. It is really tough on the urinary tract. So finally, if you can get a third cutting, then that's usually what I find is the best. Now, listen. When you are riding and you are trail riding, you are burning carbs, okay? You're burning energy. That mule is burning energy. He's out on that trail going. It's not like him sitting in a corral just waiting for the next corral cleaning, all right? He's out there burning that. And so what happens is you, you need to prepare them and start feeding them whole oats. You can just give them a handful before you get ready to, you, you know, you got a week for a big trail ride. So you can give them a handful here and there. You never want to just give them a lot of feed at one time. It's tough on their, on their uh, intestinal tract, large and small intestines. It's a good way to get them colic. Just go on. So uh, I always like to feed whole oats when I'm getting ready for a trail ride. That gives them the energy to burn okay with your hay that's the supplement that you would need for your hay one thing i would bet be whole oats now some places don't get a third cutting here in arizona we've had fourth cuttings even you know depending on how everything goes just right of course but here's what you want to do folks a couple different things on feed and this is so extremely important i mean really important if you really need to know what your mule and donkey, what kind of vitamins and minerals they need, you need to get a hair follicle sample or a blood test and get to know exactly what that mule and donkey needs in the way of vitamins and minerals. It's like you and I, you know, the vitamins and minerals that I need compared to what Dave needs, compared to what his wife and kids needs, they're all different, okay? You cannot get the perfect feed out there for your mule and donkey. And you cannot get the perfect bale of hay for your mule and donkey. They have a completely different intestinal tract than, than other animals do, okay? So here's the deal. Take your hay that you're going to be um, feeding, and, and I made a tool, and it's a long pipe, about 12 inches long, roughly, sharp on one end, a handle on the other, and it's a pipe. And I can shove it into a bale of hay, bring it out, and then I can take what's in that tube down and have it tested. 
and then I can have it tested and know exactly what that hay needs. You know, if you need additional selenium or zinc or whatever it may be, most of the time it's selenium, uh, then you can have it tested and make sure you're getting the right supplement to that hay for your mule or your donkey. Folks, it is really easy, really easy to have a mule or a donkey. Don't listen to these wannabe backyard people, okay? It's really easy for them to get grass founder. That's when you see the heavy places across the, the neck, tops of the ribs, across the dock of the tail. Those are fat pockets, okay? You guys know where yours are, and you girls <laughs> I know where you, we don't go any farther. Anyway, so that's where fat pockets are. So when it comes to feed, folks, it is extremely important you take care of these animals. Don't put them out on a pasture. They don't need to be on the smorgasbord seven days a week for the rest of their life. You're not fattening them up to butcher like you do cattle. You are trying to maintain them. And when you put them, them, them donkeys and mules out on that pasture, you're saying you might as well have grass founder. Okay, you might as well founder. There's a the problem, folks. You cannot take care of the health of your mule or your donkey. You can't do it when they're out there on a the pasture. You don't know who pooped where. You don't know who peed where. Steve, why is that important? Because when you've got that mule or donkey in a stall, 20 by 20 stall, you can, on a daily basis, see how healthy your mule or donkey is. You can. It's up to you to maintain them, okay? And, and believe me, if you feed them right and you take care of them and the water and drinking, you can't believe how much these mules and donkeys appreciate you. Okay, it's really important. So, you know, so here's, here's the deal. If you want to take care of their health and their wealth, <coughs> keep them in a small stall, feed them accordingly. Each meal needs a different feed, folks. They, each one needs a different feed. Some are easy keepers, some are harder keepers. So you put them in a 20 by 20 pen, you feed them according to what they need, watch their vitamins and minerals. When you see their poop, it's a nice, that road apple is a nice green and even shiny when it's brand new. Man, that's a healthy meal. Nice little pile, all in the same place. When it comes down to the water, they're drinking water. You can even turn your water off once in a while if you have automatic waters and you can see how much they're taking in. Okay, now let's go back. Oh, Steve, isn't that cruel? A 20 by 20 stall. Oh, I've got 5,000 acres out there that they can roam on. Okay, I understand. You got all that free feed out there, so to speak. You know? But it's up to you to maintain these animals correctly. Okay, and my mules, just to give you an idea, my wife's mule, 28 years old when she passed away. We had her as a two-year-old. I started her as a two-year-old. For 26 years, she was in a 20 by 20 stall. Healthy, Arizona State champion, won at the Bishop, the whole bit, okay? And she stayed in a 20 by 20 stall. Took her hunting, worked cattle, everything. So you hear, Dave, uh, you, know, I, you, you know how feed is important to me, you know? And it should be important to all of you. You shouldn't be putting them on a smorgasbord every day. Yeah, no. And we've heard so many folks uh, talk about how changing the feed changed the attitude of the animal in so oh, many yeah. different ways. So many different ways. Uh, something really cool here. Um, last week we were talking about Yolanda. She sent in some photos. I wasn't quite able to get them up right away, but I've got them here now. And so um, you can see right there, there's Yolanda's uh, Spanish mule right there. Got her friend right there hanging out. Oop. Steve Edwards <laughs> set up right there. Look at all that padding. Oh, my goodness. Then right there, running free. Look at that. Nice. Very, very nice. good. So, uh, yeah, you like that one there, Steve? Oh, that's cute. Yolanda, you and that mule are a perfect match. 
They get along. They get along real good together. Uh, we got to put that on, on a website. That's a great picture. We will. Uh, so, question came in from Bradley. Uh, watching from South Georgia, it's sunny and ninety degrees. My first time tuning in live. I bought Steve's come along rope, and that thing is a miracle worker on all mules I have messed with since. I love it. I'm getting ready to purchase a saddle and all the recommended gear that Steve offers, but I have a question about bridle for my 18 one-hand mule. Which of your bridles will fit? He has a super long head. Did we already talk about this? Uh, you know, we've talked about it with other people, and I've talked. I've, Bradley had sent me pictures and stuff too. He's got this huge mule, nice mule. Uh, but, but yeah, my my bridle will fit. You can go either way, the beta bridle, or you can go with my all leather bridle, my large. Uh, that'll work just fine too. Next question. This one come in from Kevin says, hi, Stephen, Dave, 80 degrees and sunshine here in Kansas. I have Steve's Packer saddle and buckaroo saddle. Is your rancher saddle built on the same tree as your buckaroo? Um, Steve, is it the same one? And real quick for folks who are watching who don't know, I just talk real quick about your tree. Okay. So my tree is a tree that I designed packing freight here at Queen Valley Mule Ranch. We uh, had a very good friend of mine, Abe Hewer, who has since passed away and gone home with the Lord, wonderful Christian man. And he would come down from Canada every year, along with a lot of other Canadian ranchers and cowboys and stuff like this. And a lot of them would stay here at the ranch. Abe Hewer wanted to design, to design a pack saddle that would fit every mule. And I said, nope. Ain't impossible. That can't work, you know. Now this guy, he packed freight and designed things for the Canadian uh, Forestry Service. So he knows something about things and he packed a lot of mules. He says, nope, I think I got it figured out. So he actually designed an adjustable pack saddle where the bars float, okay? The arches, I can make it wider or narrower, there we are, okay? There's the pack saddle. Now, by that, I started packing freight with all of my mules, okay? And I started having less and less and less and less sore backs. I had less and less and less mules grumpy, and it was great. Then, I started riding more mules, and that's when I developed my, my saddle in my tree. You see those bars there in that pack saddle? Those bars are what have been around for almost 30 years now. Those bars I developed in that pack saddle, not just packing the sandwich up the road, okay? Not packing the sandwich up the road, but I mean packing freight. 250 pounds would be max, 200 would be an average. So I got to learning by adjustable by adjusting that my what angles my bars needed to be, how wide my bars need, how wide they needed to be, how long they needed to be. And I took and started telling a saddle maker, I need a saddle for a mule. Okay? I need a tree that's gonna work. Oh, Steve. You can just put on anyone and be just fine. Nope, I wasn't satisfied with that, folks. I wasn't satisfied with that. And so I started working and trying and trying different things. Come to find out, this is what I found out. The majority of saddles out there are made two ways. The quarter horse has the basic line. Semi-quarter horse and quarter horse. You go into any saddle shop, you're going to see semi-quarter horse and quarters. I don't care what manufacturer, folks. You can try it on 100 different saddles. They're all the exact same tree. They are, okay? Quarter horse or semi-quarter horse, all right? Now, you can see in these videos, and Dave will probably give you the link to it, that it's free. You can go there. It's called Mastering the Saddle Fit. And everything that you're seeing right there is exactly all the different size of mules, big, small mules, all kinds of them. So let's go back. By having that adjustable pack saddle, okay? You can see how there, that's a horse tree. 
going into the mule's back. And people are going to see this in Superior when I'm up here next week. But let's go back. By having that adjustable pack saddle, I was able to learn the angles and the consistency of what worked. But again, not just one saddle or two, not just one mule or two, hundreds of mules, okay? Hundreds of saddles. Uh, and, and so we, uh, that's what I developed. And I know it works, okay? You can see right there how I'm talking about different things. And, and the folks in Superior, um, uh, Montana, they're going to get a chance to see firsthand as well. So there you are, folks. Uh, when it comes to these saddles, every saddle has exactly the same tree. Every saddle. Unless you go the slick fork saddle, the rancher. And the only difference is there is the pummel. That's the front part of the saddle with the horn. It's called a pummel. On a slick fork saddle, the, the, the pummel is at an A shape. On a modified association saddle, which is what mine are, the pummels are like this with the horn right here in the middle, okay? And I found that that modified association works the best. The seat is deep. Guys need an unpadded seat. Girls need a padded seat. The difference is the pelvis, how the pelvis is on the, on the man and the woman. That's why... When it comes down to a padded seat, women do best in a padded seat. They don't feel forward in the saddle. Men feel forward in the saddle. When you have an unpadded seat, men feel like they're down in the saddle. Okay. So there it is, Dave. That's a, it in a nutshell. But if they go to my website um, and go down to Mastering the Saddle Fit, I think you can send them the, the link to that. Yeah. They'll be able to see all those kind, all those mules down at the Andrada Ranch. They can see it firsthand. Look, you know, and see how that how that all works. Yeah, very good, awesome, uh, great question. Moving right along, Violet is watching today from um, let's see here, eighty five degrees, and my mule uh, hates it. Uh, let's see, out in W N Y, Western New York, I guess, and my mule hates it. Uh, Rory is watching from Southwest Ohio, hot, sweet, and sticky. Um, that's how I like my cinnamon rolls. Uh, Dave Pingelli is watching 70 degrees and fantastic here in Manchester, Georgia. Whitney says, I moved my seven year old gelding mule from a mare pasture to the gelding pasture due to behavioral issues one week ago. He sometimes let me, lets me halter him to take him out to feed. And some days he doesn't since I moved him to the gelding pasture. How do I get him to halter every time without running from me? I've never experienced this behavior before. Dave, we were just talking about this. Just talking about going out to pastures. Folks, it's the number one thing. Okay. Now, number one thing is feed. And when you want a mental change in these animals, put them out in a gelding pasture or in a mare pasture or put them out in a pasture, you will start getting changes mentally. And here it is right here. We were just talking about it, Dave. And right here, this lady now, sometimes she can halt her, she, sometimes she can't. Now get this in your mind, folks. It's always coming. I'm trying to show you that it's coming. Pay attention now, because later on, oh, hell's gonna break loose. Yeah, like her, you know? It's a small thing right now. She can put the halter on sometimes, okay? But that mule says, no, you know, I, I, I'm I, going to have it my way. No, no more your way. This is not this is not Burger King. You don't get it your way, okay? This is, what, this is what you do. Put them in a 20 by 20 stall and watch the attitude change. You put them out in a pasture, especially with other animals, the attitude is going to change. You are going to go from being the herd leader to one that, that animal will follow to a nobody, nobody. That's what, and so now, unfortunately, you hear this, folks? She's paying the price, okay? Only way you're going to fix this, put them in a 20 by 20 stall. They are there for the rest of their life, okay? Don't think it's cute. Put them out there in a pasture. Don't think, 
Oh, look how nice that is. They get to run and play together. You'll get to the place. You can't go nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go into lots of stories, but put them in a 20 by 20 stall. You'll see the attitude change. Everything. Yeah, everything changes when you do that. Oh, yeah. We've had so many people call and um, message and, and say that that just made a world of difference. So give it a whirl and uh, see if uh, you can report the exact same thing. Hopping back over, Sherman Johnson. Johnson's taxidermy is watching. Tammy is watching. 76 degrees here in central Utah. Roger hey, is Sherman. watching. What's that? I, I want to say hey to Sherman when you get down there. Okay. Uh, Roger is watching from Milan, New York, 83 and sunny. Dorsey is watching from Winchester, Kentucky, 84 degrees and sunny. Hey, David Scholl, Coffee by David. Good afternoon, Stephen Dave from Temporary Cody, Wyoming. All right. No, that's David Scholl. David Scholl. Yeah. Oh, hey. He's you said here. Coffee by David. No. No, I, I got it wrong. Yeah. International. That's Australia, David, right there. And he gets the glockenspiel even though he's over here stateside. David Pingelli is coffee by David. David Scholl is Australia, David. My bad. Cody, Wyoming. See you up in Montana here pretty soon. Hey, Joyce is watching. Uh, go ahead and uh, she's got a question. Talk to Sherman real quick there, Steve. Hey, Sherman. Guess what, buddy? I drawed a buffalo hunt here in Arizona. You hear that, folks? Once in a lifetime that you can get a buffalo hunt and somebody couldn't use their tag. So the game of fish called me up and said, you're next in line. And I just got a once in a lifetime buffalo tag. So I am going buffalo hunting. Now get this, Dave. Get this. Where I'm going buffalo hunting is up at the Grand Canyon. Do I know a little bit about the Grand Canyon? Yeah, a little bit. So let's go on. One of my clients up there, Russ Taylor, is the top guide for hunting in this area for these buffalo. Now these buffalo folks are the true wild range buffalo that had gotten loose. And the problem is they're going into the Grand Canyon parks where they are illegal. And the Game of Fish has done a lot of things, forced the, the, the government, federal government's done a lot of things. They even brought helicopters in and I won't go into any more details, okay? But to give you an idea, three years ago, they had 12 tags. They wanted to remove 12 buffalo, Dave. 45,000 people put in for them 12 tags. Can you imagine? And I get a call up and said, hey, we got a tag you want it. And I said, oh, yeah. And Russ, one of my mule guys, is going to help me. Nice. And I want to tell Sherman, Sherman, you get to get to do something with my buffalo, don't you? <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, okay. Joyce watching from Canada. So that means international. Where's my glockenspiel? There we go. Alberta, Canada starting to look more like AZ. I finally have a question. My 21 year old John is in a good size dry lot with my 20 year old Molly. I have had this John for one year. He spends most of his day pacing down and back along the fence line. Any idea why he does that? ADHD, his prior owner that had him since he was weaned, says he didn't do this. On the trail, he is an energizer bunny. He really walks out. He is fed on grass hay only. What would you say here to Joyce? So now he's in a stall with another Molly Mule. Is that what I understand? They're in the same stall? It's what it sounded like. Uh, good size dry lot with my 20-year-old Molly. Okay, so it sounds like, okay. And he's pacing up and down, okay? Folks, that kind of a mule wants something to do. I like that kind of mule. I like the kind of mule that'll be at the gate weaving back and forth. Come on, let's go someplace. Let's go get something done. Let's go. My Shire mules, Dave, used to always be at the gate first thing in the morning, ready to go pull wagons and train young mules. So I'm always weaving at the gate. Come on, let's go. I want to go to work. And then the ones that walk up and down, they really want to be with some other animals most of the time. Since how this one has a molly mule in there, that's kind of surprising because usually they're happy to have one other person. In this particular case, this mule just loves to walk up and down. Let it go. He's energized and buzzy, bunny. He's got that kind of energy. Good. 
feed him accordingly and go from there. But be happy that you got a mule that you don't have to paddle. Give me that kind of mule any day. Awesome. Very good. Uh, Violet says, my mule came in a year ago, age three to four, came in a year ago, age three to four years old and close to unhandleable, could not get near him, skittish, but not mean. He has gotten a lot better. I can do most things to him, trimmed his feet myself, can catch him loose outside in a group and bring him in, but he's not as good for other people. And I don't feel like he's ready to ride yet, possibly due to mental maturity. Is it normal for them to be better for one person than everyone else? And is it normal for it to take this long? Okay. So of course, I don't know the steps that you took to take it, to do a whole year. Uh, I can tell you that most folks don't know how to build a foundation of do it three, one day, six, another day, nine, another day, 12, another day, three, six, nine, 12. Most people overdo it and do too much and they don't learn a foundation. Now it used to be Dave that we had these kind of mules all the time. Like she's talked about hated everybody else, but loved one person. And that kind of a mule was bred incorrectly by just sorry mares or sorry jacks. So this could be not just a matter of being anything, but, but not bred to a good mare. Okay. Uh, or a good Jack. So, uh, is it unusual? No, it happens all the time. This time frame, this, this day and age, it is pretty unusual because, um, the, uh, the, the breeding so much more better. Do people still breed incorrectly? Yes. And so going back to my original thing, you could have had a sorry mare or a sorry Jack. You end up with a sorry mule. Now here's the thing about it. Okay. You've got this mule out in a pasture with other animals. Don't do that folks. Don't I'm ta I'm saying this again, Dave, and I've said it, I'll say it and I'll say it. Okay. 20 by 20 stall. And when you are training, it's imperative that you keep them in a small stall because they don't need you. They go out there to their buddies. They don't need you. They cannot make any mental or physical training changes folks. When you are keeping them out in a pasture with other animals, forget it. If you are training, especially it is imperative that they're in a small stall where they start depending upon you. Okay. Good for you that you're doing all that stuff on your own, trimming feet and everything. That's good. That's great. Polly's watching from Barnesville, Minnesota, 83 and humid. Julie says, if I have your saddle fitted for my three-year-old mule, will it still fit him when he is five? Oh yeah. No problem. There that my wife's mule was 28 years old when she passed away. That mule rode my saddle for over 25 years. Did she make a lot of changes? Oh yes. Okay. Here's the thing, folks. My saddles are designed for bone structure. The majority of saddle makers and, and saddle fitters, which I have great disdain for most of them, they don't think about anything, but okay, that tree fits. Yeah. Oh yeah. But this tree fits better. And oh, we got to do these measurements. We've got these special gauges and this will work best. Well, that will be fine if you were measuring to butcher a cow. No, don't do that folks. The bone structure is what changes. No, it doesn't change. The muscle tone is what changes. Bone structure stays the same. So, well, will that saddle fit her for the next 25 years? Yes, absolutely. I've got the proof, my wife's mule, okay? That is for years. Now I got, I got other clients that have started their babies and that are now 10, 15 years old. They're still riding the mules. I got clients all the time. I get emails and texts and everything from people saying, man, you sat up with this mule and that mule and this donkey and that donkey. Yes, folks, I designed the saddle to fit bone structure. Don't listen to these saddle makers who just want to make you a saddle that definitely won't fit. Okay. You will definitely have problems with uh, my saddles proven Dave. They're proven. Absolutely. Great question. Love having that question. It's an investment that actually keeps 
uh, showing its use over and over and over the years. I uh, got a question came in on Facebook. Linda says, do mules get along with dogs and ponies? No, nope. not all the time. Okay. Uh, I can tell you that when we are hunting lions, we got dogs. When we are working cattle, we have dogs. But here's the problem. Dogs are predator. Mule and donkeys are prey animals. They can feel like they are being predatory toward. So that predator, i.e. the dog, i.e. sometimes a goat, sometimes a Shetland pony. Now Shetland ponies can also, they can be quite a pain uh, around mules and donkeys. That's another story, but here's the thing folks. Uh, I can tell you a sad story or two about some kids that went out to see the mule and the mule struck them. And if they hadn't got them away in time, they'd have killed them. Okay. Uh, some mules just feel like uh, smaller things or, or predators. Other, other mules, everybody loves them. Okay. Uh, and that mule loves everybody. You just have to be careful. Remember, folks, they are animals. Animals. They can change in a split second. Don't think, okay, that it is cute to crawl between their legs. It is not. It is stupidity in the number one thing, okay? Treat them like a mule, and you be the, you be the, the herd leader, and you'll be just fine. Now, uh, you know, sure, we see some funny, fun pictures. We just saw, um, uh, what's her name from the Netherlands, with her head underneath her mule, you know? That mule knows her and trusts her, and there you go, that one, you know? Uh, but folks want to be careful. You want to be careful. Now, is there a way to fix a mule to accept a dog? No. Okay. No. And let me just, let me give you some stories. Here's, here, let me just give you a short story. I am riding a really nice mule. This mule is 26 years old down at the Andrada ranch. We're working cattle. This mule has ranched all his life, all his life. This mule has seen dogs, rattlesnakes, got the idea of cattle of all kinds, all kinds. And one day I'm riding along this mule and I haven't ridden this mule in quite a while. So I was riding this mule and all of a sudden out from the left side, out of the brush comes my border colleague, Jess, and he come out and it, it scared my mule. Now, has, has he seen dogs? Yeah. Has he seen Jess? Yes. This mule jumped in the air and went to bucking about three or four times. And when you have a thousand pounds hit you between the legs, you're going to be red, white, and blue for a lot of months. And I was, okay. Now look, here is an experienced mule, seen the dogs and everything. What happened? That mule was, was uh, not, not so much he was afraid, but all of a sudden it was a sudden movement out of the bushes. And he's seen that before, but it happened, okay. Uh, and he also struck at my dog. Fortunately, he missed. Okay. And that mule had never struck at a dog before. We've gone out many times. So going back to this, never say, never say the mule never done that before. No, it's time's coming. All mules bite. All mules run off. All mules kick. You want to treat them like an equine, folks. An equine. Not your best friend. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mark is watching from Virginia where it's Rain and Clouds. That was the name of my first album, Rain and Clouds. Bruce is watching from New Bromfels, sunny and 86 degrees. Yolanda says, I'm here. We talked about you, Yolanda. We showed your photos. Thank you so much for sending those in. Shannon is watching from South Carolina where it's 80 and sunny. Violet says, that's exactly what I did, Steve. Slow steps, 3, 6, 9, 12. Joyce says, thanks, Steve. That is confirmation to me. He is always first at the gate and keen to go to work. Glad to hear you like him like that, too. Oh, yeah. Yolanda, Yolanda says, my mule will kill no matter what dogs, cats, sheep, goats, even wolves. She'll get them. So there you go. There's a testimonial there from Yolanda. They just go after him. She's in the Netherlands. Yeah. 
She says she just sent me pictures. I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can get to it uh, in time. Had a question come through on Facebook. Uh, just pulled a draft mule from the slaughter line. She's with a gelding horse now, but in the beginning, I had her with my uh, OTTB mare. What does OTTB mare mean? You got me. Uh, should I keep her t separate totally while training or no? This one is from Jen. Yes, I just spoke about this. And folks, when you are training, these mules need to stay in a small pen. Even in throughout life, they need to stay in a small pen, 20 by 20. At my ranch, each one of my stalls are 10 foot wide, 20 foot long. I find that works the very best for being keeping meals consistent their first five months of training, maybe six months of training. After that, I will, I will open up the center pins and I will have them in a 20 by 20 stall. But you never, ever, ever want to put them together, especially when you're training. You want to keep them in, in a small pen. You want to feed them according to your training program. You know, when, they, when they're running, burning more energy, Give them feed to burn that energy. See, it seems like that's something that comes up over and over again. We might we might need to do some sort of uh, signature training or some sort of an event or something talking about, uh, you know, living quarters for a mule, living quarters for a donkey, because it seems like that's such a foundational, fundamental thing. Uh, yet, and, and when people follow it, they experience just the results that that they were anticipating when they follow those instructions yet it seems to me so many folks are coming in um not having heard that at all like not having heard to keep them separate um and and i i understand the mentality almost like the heart compassion thing is like well i don't want them to be all trapped i don't want them to be locked up i want them to be out and like you know roam and, and whatnot and it's like well that might be okay if if it's a wild animal, but if you're talking about an animal that, you know, that, that you're caring for, that you want to use to work, you want to use to ride or pack or whatever the case might be, it's just, it's different guidelines. It's different, uh, different things you need to go after. And, uh, you know, it, it, it makes a difference. Um, Yolanda says OTTB stands for off the track, off track thoroughbred. An off track thoroughbred is a horse that was bred and trained to be a racehorse and is now not an active racehorse. Many OTTBs are registered with the Jockey Club. There you go. Learning something new every day, folks. We'll be here each and every week. Uh, let's say, and hey, several people knew it. I said, what is that? You said, what is that? We got a bunch of people chiming in. Trace is watching from Lowood, Queensland, Australia, where we've gone international again uh, out there. It's uh, first day of winter there tomorrow, so enjoy the winter. I I, ha I haven't had the winter of 2023 yet. I've had the January year. So you tell me what winter 2023 is going to be like. Folks, we got a few minutes left here. Uh, real quick, if this is the first time you're ever watching with us, we're so glad to have you. My name is Dave, and this is Steve. Every week we get together to talk mules and donkeys. Any and every question that you got, this is where you bring it. We want to make sure that you have the confidence and clarity you need in your instruction so that when you get out there and you work with your animal, you can gain their trust, get results, and enjoy all of the benefit of uh, just the Cadillac of the equine world. That is the mule and the donkey. Uh, so there's really only three things that we ask. First, that you share your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like there. That gives us an idea of who's out there today, who we're getting to spend a little bit of time with, and uh, make this big old wide world just a little bit smaller for us in this mule and donkey community. We would love if you would share your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like. The second thing is that you ask any and every mule or donkey question that you have. Uh, we would really enjoy the opportunity to tell you what's worked for us and then give you a chance to go out there, give it a try for yourself, and then come back, share pictures, give a report, and say, hey, that worked out okay, or uh, hey, I need some follow-up help, or uh, goodness, it did not work the way that I wanted. We want those conversations uh, because we believe they're all part of uh, – you know, getting results and going through the difficult things is, is uh, a little bit more difficult than going through the good things, but it all ends up in the same place at the end, and that is having fun. And then the third thing is we ask you to share the broadcast. 
on YouTube or Facebook, there's a share button, there's a like button, there's a subscribe button. Uh, just use those, and uh, it would be real good to have you continue to share the broadcast and hang out with us. Uh, Steve, I, I actually, um, we really don't have any other questions that have come through today. Um, you're going to be heading out to Montana here in the next, uh, the next day or so, aren't you? Yeah, Thursday morning. Uh, we're going to be on an airplane at 6 o'clock. But while I'm thinking about this, Dave, uh, I'm going to give a hat to the person who can tell me where Yolanda is from. All right. So the way this is going to work, the person who can tell Steve where Yolanda is from, it's on my screen. I've got integrity. I'm not picking favorites. It is the first person who gets it correct on my screen. Uh, that brings in YouTube and Facebook all in one place. Where is Yolanda from? Uh, Yolanda's been watching with us for uh, years now. I remember several years back she came on. She says, I have a Spanish mule. Steve says, I don't think I've ever heard of a Spanish mule. And it uh, the rest has been learning about Yolanda, learning about uh, what she's doing out there, learning about all the care uh, that she's had to provide. Um, and uh, she is holding down what we call the unofficial mule ranch club in the Netherlands. Uh, she's just like David Scholl is bringing awareness to Australia. Yolanda is bringing awareness to the Netherlands. And that is the answer right there is the Netherlands. And our winner today is Polly Thorst Thorstness, the winner. And what is this? Was this for a hat, Steve, or was this for, for a hat. shirt? For a hat. Okay, now here's, here's the big deal. I'm going to give a hat and a T-shirt to the person who can tell me what kind of problems Yolanda was having with her mule. Oh my. We, we've done videos, you know, we've got pictures, we've talked about it. What kind of problems did Yolanda have with her mule? A hat and a t-shirt if you answer that one. This is a big one, folks, because we've talked about this over several broadcasts. So if you know this one, that means you've been watching, whether you've been watching live or watching the replay. So what? problems has Yolanda been working through with her animal? And I know there has been several, so I'll let Steve, I'll, I'll list them off here when folks bring them in. And I'll, and you know what, folks, if, if, if you don't know, just put in a guess, put in a guess. What could it hurt? You might be the first person and you put in the guess there, put in a guess. Uh, yeah, Yolanda has been gracious to send pictures to us oh. um, through every uh, different thing that she's gone through with her animal. Um, Constantly sharing updates, what she's doing, what's been working, what hasn't been working, um, who she's had to come out see her mule, um, just about anything and everything. Um, okay, let's see here. Real quick, we'll give you a couple more moments, folks, to put in what has Yolanda been working through fixing with her mule. Uh, while she's doing that, Jim is watching. It's 79. I think it's 79. Jim just says, hello, y'all, 79. So either Jim's 79 years old or it's 79 degrees where he's at. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Se okay, Central Alabama. Jim says 79, low humidity in, <laughs> humidity in Central Alabama. Daniel is watching from Lindenville, New York, around 82 degrees. All right, here are a few of the choices. Bolting, escaping, catching, bucking, killing dogs, another for bolting, another for runaway, and one for hooves. Steve, do any of these hit the mark? Hooves. Hooves. There we go. Mule shoe. Mule, mule shoe on YouTube. You are the winner. Mule shoe. What is... Uh, you might have said it already. I apologize if I forgot. What is your name, Mule Shoe? We wanna we wanna get this hat and this T-shirt out to you. Um, uh, I think it was uh, was it Polly that want yeah Polly and Mule Shoe send uh, send a message. Have them, have them uh, email me that they're the winners with the address and stuff. Now here's the thing: Yolanda has been through all kinds of veterinarians, uh, uh, shoers, you know, farriers, and she has been through it. She, she heard me talk about angles. She talked, you know, and how important it was to have, uh, get rid of contracted heels. She has spent a small fortune figuring things out and she did it. 
this mule has a near perfect hoof now. Now, she also, there in the Netherlands, found in a museum a skeletal structure of a donkey and skeletal structure of a horse. I think we got that information someplace on my website there, Dave. I don't remember where right now. But anyway, she says, look, look, there is a difference, you know. And then, and of course, all the pictures she sent to us and all the information about uh, the hooves and what she's gone through to find a good farrier and this sort of thing. It's incredible. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm looking to see if I can find that, if I can pull that up real quick. Uh, she sent a video in, and I am looking to see if I can. All right. Let me bring this up here. Put this right here. Give me a second. So, folks, we're going to be in Superior, Montana, uh, this this weekend, this coming up weekend, and uh, I'm going to be there, and we're going to have a good time uh, working with you and helping you out. There goes Yolanda's mule, going down the road there in the Netherlands. Beautiful mule, just absolutely dapple gray, beautiful. But look, look at this mule. Happy ears are flopping. That's a happy meal. And she's she's also bilingual. She speaks English and she speaks Netherlands or whatever that is. Ah. I'm looking right here to see if I can find that picture of the of the bone structure. I do know that I have it somewhere. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. Save. I'll bring it up here. Y'all, hey, y'all don't don't fret. I've got it. Gonna take care of it here. Gonna take care of everyone here. Get a nice picture. Bone structure. Mule. All right, here we go. Let me pull it up. Recent. Today. Oh, where did it go? Oh, good. We're gonna have some awesome weather in Montana. Gonna be in the 70s. All right, here we go. Y'all are going to enjoy this. All right, check it out. So there you go. Now, I can't remember which one is which, Steve. Do you recall? That looks like the donkey there. Donkey Just by right looking at general, yeah, seeing where things are. And that's the horse, I would say. Donkey. Mule. Donkey, okay. Donkey or mule, yeah. Look at the bone structure there. The picture, it's kind of fuzzy, but this picture right here, to me, looks like a donkey. I'm sure Yolanda's watching and she can yeah. uh, correct us. Yeah. yeah, I would say that's definitely donkey there. But there's one outside right there. I think that's a horse. Yeah. Very cool to look at. Very, very cool. Yeah. Look at. Donkey, look at the difference. What a difference. All right, let's see here. Um, well, Dave, we're done, huh? I think so. Let me see. A lot of stuff. Yolanda goes, yep, a lot of stuff Stuff fighting for my mule. No joke. Uh, Whitney says, where can I learn more about 36912? Whitney, that's a really good question. I don't know that we have a video specifically that talks about 36912. But it is in the majority of the ground foundation videos that are on our YouTube channel. Um, the 36912 essentially is you don't need to train a lot and you don't need to train every day. Um, just a few hours a week is sufficient. And when you're training, folks want to know, you know, how much am I supposed to do? And so the 36912 is if you're going out there and, you know, you're teaching them to turn on the forehand, you get them to do it. Three times, three good ones in a row. And once you get three good ones in a row, you're done for the day. Then the next time you come out, you get them to do six good ones in a row. And once you get six good ones in a row, you're done for the day. And so on and so forth. And that's, you know, maybe it's, it's uh, you got a little obstacle. You have a pallet and you're trying to get them to walk over the pallet. Three, six, nine, twelve. Uh, Steve, am I getting that correct? Yeah, you're doing fine, uh, David. The thing is, is, is folks are saying, well, I spent 20 minutes on my meal training. That, that was probably 10 minutes too long, okay? Now, how do you know? 
when you are working with these mules, when you see them drop their head and kind of relax, then they got it. Okay, so here's what I would say. I would say, today, I'm going to ask my mule to lower his head three times. Right hand on the pole, left hand on the nose, I'm gonna wait. When the mule drops his head, I'm gonna take my hands off, put my hands back on. That's one. Now the mule's thinking, all right, all I gotta do is lower my head, and you take your hands off. Take my hands off, put it back on. That's two. Now the mule's thinking, all right, wait a minute, uh, my head's still down, but you haven't taken your hands off. They lower their head again, take my hands off, put my hands on, it's three, I'm done today. The next time I train, a week later, a couple days later, don't have to train every day. Next time I train, I do those three. And if the mule or donkey does those three good, then I will add three more making six. But I wanna make sure they got the three good. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be that mule's head moved a quarter inch each time. That's good. I want to see changes and the smallest try I will reward. Right here, I thought you might enjoy seeing this again, Steve. These are the pictures of Yolanda's, right. uh, uh, the hooves that she was working on there. Yep. Um, and then Spent a lot of time, a lot of money getting that right, but that mule is right now, thanks to Yolanda. And right here, let's see, she said, I think this is it, video with the new saddle. I guess that's what this is right here. She's riding the saddle. There you go. Yeah, she's riding the the, uh, the buckaroo. Let's see here. Video about the saddle. My mule, uh, Julie says, my mule would not stand still. Donkey, donkey, donkey. Uh, okay, last question of the day. Violet says, is that just a way to stop people jumping up the mule behavior chain and trying to get the mule to do things it's not conditioned enough to do? do? Exactly. Good point. Good one. There you go. Awesome. Well, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Really appreciate it. It's good to spend a little bit of time with you. We know you could be doing a lot of different things with your time. The fact that you're here means a lot. Uh, please uh, check out muleranch.com. You can get the Ground Foundation Starting Kit, which uh, ironically we didn't talk about today. Usually we talk about that multiple times. Get the Ground Foundation Starting Kit, and that is the gateway to uh, herd leadership. That's the gateway to communication. That is the gateway to tune up. That is the gateway to correction. That comes with the come along rope, the problem mule video, and a rope halter for when you get to special exercises like sur single training and so forth. Uh, MuleRanch.com. Steve is going to be in Montana this weekend. If you would like to come out and be a spectator, uh, MuleRanch.com. There's information there in our clinics. I actually think there's some participant spots. We had a couple folks uh, have to back out. And so if you were a little bummed that you couldn't get your participant spot, we had a couple people back out. You can go check it out there at MuleRanch.com. Get registered. We'd love to have you out there. And then uh, come this fall, Steve's going to be in Tennessee, and that will be uh, a lot of fun. But Steve, thanks so much for hanging out. Appreciate it. Folks, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.